Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match from, well, not only the dawn for another exhibition match. I remain your host, Shadow Fury Three Three Three, and this is a match between Sprung and Orpheus on a Kyle and Waste, the map which I haven't seen in Zero K before, and it looks like a StarCraft map. I don't know if it is a StarCraft map. I don't really feel like checking right now since I'm in the middle of a cast, but it does look fair. Like they have the whole ramp set up and everything, and the cliffs and all that. So I'm guessing that this is originally a StarCraft map. I don't know that it's originally a StarCraft map. Flipsip says it is a StarCraft map according to their recollection. Like I said, I don't know. I can check at some point. Like I said, at the end of the last game, I'm probably... I'm, I got Legacy of the Void just to see if it's... Well, because I found it a bit better than the other two. I haven't gotten the other two versions of StarCraft 2. And I'm probably going to stream it later. Just playing, not replays. But yeah, me playing it, trying it out, probably discussing some of the design choices that I think are good and some of the design choices that I think are still kind of questionable. Anyway, that's not now. Now is Sprung versus Orpheus on Akylon Wastes. Sprung going for Shieldbot Factory and Orpheus going for Cloakybot Factory, a factory I've not seen in a while. Cloakybot has really kind of fallen out of popularity. Some people think that it doesn't... Well, not some people. I can't remember who it was who said that Cloakybot basically has no options to deal with anything anymore. It was a YouTube comment, I think. A little bit harsh, but not entirely incorrect in the current meta. Jumpbot being one of the main reasons why, Clo as far as I know, why Cloakybot became less popular, just because dealing with Jumpbot is a pain in the butt. Shieldbot versus Cloakybot, I'm pretty sure, is as balanced as ever, though. The, the matchup was always about 5 5. It wasn't really, to my experience or what I've watched, particularly lopsided. Although in a map like this, with the choke points and everything, I think Shieldbot's going to have a really nice time. Because the choke points do mean that they're, well, they're forcing their opponents to be in a bit more of a closed location when they're setting up their Felon Ball. Now that's assuming that Sprung does go for a Felon Ball. This map is probably small enough that a Felon Ball could walk across the map quickly enough to be useful. Although it's also bigger than it looks. I think it's like 18 by 14. So actually, it I might be wrong. It might actually be fairly large. I don't think it's... No, it's not 18 by 14. It's smaller than that. It's probably like 14 by 10. Or, sorry, it's square. 14 by 14. I don't think it's any smaller than that. It does look a little large. But, like I said, it should be fine. But yeah, with the choke points, that does help the slightly more closed-in play of later shield bot tech. But not... Or the later game shield bot units, but not so much for the early game stuff. It sort of helps too, though. I mean, bandits... You need fewer bandits for the same number of glaives. Like, you need more glaives to fight bandits. Oh, and apparently this map has a bunch of features on it that are not shown because... Okay, Flips just give me some history about this. <laughs> but yeah, apparently this is a modified version of one of Foreboding, Foreboding Angels maps, the guy who made Evolution RTS. Another good spring game. That's on Steam, actually. So anyway, this... This is kind of even. I mean, at this point, neither player's really had much chance to interact with the other. Sprung's dealt a bit of damage to Orpheus' army. Orpheus has not dealt any damage to anything that Sprung has. And Sprung doesn't really have much in the way of defenses either. They have the one laser turret on their main ramp. They have another laser... No, they have no lotuses in the back. Orpheus, considerably more defensive, with defenders being built pretty much everywhere. They're getting paranoid. Ironically, not in their main base, and they could be getting in some air or gunship attacks pretty soon. Okay, no, okay, I'll that soon. Like, three minutes in, it's not gonna happen. But six minutes in, yeah, that's when air switches often happen. And Orphelius at this point, especially on a map like this, where it's pretty easy to set up. Like, it's fairly easy on a map with cliffs and choke points. Basically lock yourself in and make it difficult for your opponent to attack. Which means then air and gunships are gonna be used. And when air and gunships get used, well, then you're dealing with some problems. Like, air and gunships are, well, not going to be stopped by nothing, that's for sure. And Orpheus coming in, and very nice angle, too. Really good on this, although unfortunately not able to actually do any damage, but that was a good angle on the bandit line. No additional glaives to try to outflank them again, so not really going to be ultimately that effective. Still kind of cool. But, yeah, it didn't really work out. 
And now Sprung with Counterattack, which should be more effective. Orphelius once again attempting to go over to the edge, trying to outflank as best as possible. And unfortunately not able to do so, pulling back into the defender instead. Got a free band kill off that. That was nice. So, at this point, Sprung is a little bit behind. The only thing Orphelius doesn't have is production, mind you. They are actually starting to stall. Their factory only getting plus 10, while... Actually, that's also true of Sprung. Neither player has been assisting anything... has been assisting their factory at all. Good tick shot there, which should give Orphelius the room to destroy these bandits completely. And there we go, at the loss of only like three or four glaives, getting rid of the entire bandit ball. That's quite effective. Well done, Orphelius. And this is pretty close to Orphelius' territory, so getting the reclaim after this is just a matter of securing this, which shouldn't be too difficult. Setting him some defenders, and then from there, Orphelius will be able to just get all of this 500-ish metal, or 400-ish metal. That's a healthy amount of metal. Good chunk. Now Sprung going in. Well, another little set of metal extractors. I mean, expansion in this game is not that hard. Setting up metal extractors is pretty cheap, so it's... It's not that... I mean... Sprung is actually making a bit of a deal of this. Are they? Oh, they are building a gunship plant. That's why. Building a mid... Fa or, well, not quite mid area. But yeah, building a fo slightly forward gunship plant near that expansion area. And that's another nice dead convict. So Orphelia is able to now get some counter harassment with that little bit of confidence gotten by killing that bandit ball. Now able to deal some meaningful damage, and this should be good. Ooh, nice block. Good shield usage from Sprung there. Not enough, mind you, but still good shield usage. Probably killed off two or three glaives more than would have been killed otherwise from that Lotus. Now, is Orphelius changing to anything? No, they have a caretaker on the main factory. Sprung does not. Sprung very much focused on getting this gunship plant up. Which, ooh, does... Will Orphelius see it? I don't know if they'll see it. Please tell me they see it. I don't know... Looks like they did not see it. That is unfortunate. And Sprung will be able to get away with this. I don't know if they, I don't think the Glaives actually had the, the sight range to be able to see that far from the cliff. But that's very close. I mean, the Glaives, if they go right here, I think... Oops, I think right here, I think they'll have just enough sight range to see one of the Lotuses and maybe suspect something. But they're probably thinking, I mean, Orphelius is probably thinking that they're going to be dealing with a standard shield ball. However, it's about six minutes into the game, so they should be expecting air, and Orphelius going for heavy tank and, well, forward heavy tank on top of gunship. Banishers, which actually are a really good choice. I don't know if, I don't think Orphelius saw that. I, no, Orphelius has not seen this at all. Like, they have no idea. But still, that banisher was a really good option. Because once they find out, oh, hey, gunships have been being built by Orphelius for some time now, the Banishers will help deal with them pretty effectively, too. Okay, Orphelius was... they read air, so the Banisher was a hard read. It's a good read, though. I mean, of all the hard reads you could do for anti-air, Banisher is probably the most flexible. Just because Orphelius has been dealing with some somewhat light but clumped up units. Banisher is going to be useful against the shield bots too. Like, in this particular situation... Against Shieldbot and possible air, Banisher's a great choice. And Crow, okay, that's where the gunship's coming in. So Orphelius going in for the end game right at seven minute mark. Sprung going for a bit more of a gradual strategy with the rapiers. And Sprung about to stop. Oh, Orphelius, Orphelius, are you paying attention to this? I don't think they. Nope, no, they are not. They are not paying attention to that at all. Oops. Losing those two conjurers, that's painful. This one right here should probably move too. I don't know if Orphelius realizes that's going to happen. And yes, yes they do. Or at least, no, they probably don't. They're just getting it coincidentally out of the way. There we go. Now the Banishers show off why they're a good choice in this context. The Rapiers are going to come in. They'll also be torn to shreds by this. Actually, I don't think Sprung's going to advance with them. That's the one downside is that this might be revealing the hand too soon. Oh. Are they... I don't think they're visible yet. Ah, okay, there they go. The Banishers have been revealed. So Sprung aware that there are Banishers. But it doesn't matter. Because the Banishers are... Oh, actually, the shields are better than I thought. 
shoot. I mean, okay, you can see the 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 area of effect is working wonders, though. That's why the banishers are useful. The shields are going to be a bit of a pain. Unfortunately, Orphelius' commander about to go down most like... Oh, no. Star Displacement able to discourage the rapiers enough. You ever thought they were dead? They aren't, or the commander should say was dead, and it's not. Okay, it's still dead. What am I saying? It's it's dead right now. Orphelius, however, was ahead, but they needed that commander, as they often do, for advanced construction. Like, advancing construction, I should say. Trident's coming from Orphelius, which is a good choice. There's nothing similar coming in from Orphelius, from Sprung. Continuing with their standard ground play. They are going for shield ball play. Now, what I want to see is where the banishers factor into this, because the banishers could be should be coming in fairly soon and being effective. Okay, Copperhead to deal with the rapiers. Not a bad choice. How many banishers are in play? Four banishers in play, so that's how much damage each? 440 per shot with, a lot, with the air of effect, I think dealing like half. Okay, so yeah, they will be able to one-shot thugs. Or fair, if not one-shot, then pretty easy two-shot. And the rapiers are down. Tridents... Oh, not quite. Not completely down. Largely down. Sprung, the only one with rapiers, coming in along the north. Orphilius is not that well-equipped to deal with rapiers from all sides. The tridents are slow. Effective, but slow. So, Sprung should be able to outflank Orphelius fairly effectively to harass them, and that will put Orphelius behind Sprung economically, but Sprung not really pushing a lot of production. Not pushing shield by production, surprisingly. They only have 30 metal going into their factories. Which I'm... Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by. They have construction around the map, but really, only 30 metal into the factories means Orphelius has been able to get a lot more production going. With 40 metal going into these factories, the Clogibot factory... Oh, also getting 20 metal into it. So Orphelius using a bit more than they have, but they have tons in storage, so that's fine. Oh, Orphelius pointing out their energy is entirely in one place. And yes, yes it is. That is a very dangerous thing. If those rapiers get into Orphelius' main base, Orphelius is done. They're going to have no energy after that point. Sprung on the other hand, as you can see, kind of spread out. They have wind generators everywhere. It'll take a pretty solid assault to get rid of their energy. Thanks for pointing that out, Orphelius. I have a feeling that comes into play later on, but they might just pointed it out because that's a thing to point out. And now the Banisher's Moment of Truth, Part 2. Okay, so yeah, it is. 4 does roughly one shot. With the shields. Like, in spite of the shields. Without the shields, it'd be a two shot. That area of effect has some powerful stuff. Orphelius responding to the rapiers, but more rapiers coming in. If Sprung just keeps bouncing back and forth, attacking the south and attacking the north and attacking the south and attacking the north, they should actually be able to be quite effective here. If they don't hit the center, the Copperheads will never get them. But the Copperheads still need to be there so the rapiers can't just... T I mean, the Banishers would. Okay, the problem is the Banishers would get distracted. Which admittedly would happen despite the Copperheads, but... I digress. At this point, though, Banisher and... Yeah, Banisher Copper. That's all that's being built. Rapier coming from Orphelius. And Brawlers are coming up from Sprung. Good choice to deal with the Banishers. Not so much the Copperheads, but definitely the Banishers. I was about to say, the Banishers getting distracted by the Rapiers would be a bit problematic for dealing with the Thugs. But honestly, they're both big problems, so it's not that big of a deal. And that's why Sprung has to respect Orphelius' anti-air right now. And anti-ball. Their anti swarm right now is just is exactly what it needs to be. Felon finally getting set up though. Orphelia's moving away from that. Does not want to deal with that. Although with the rapiers, that should be okay. Slow damage does deal a lot to shields, but it looks like at this point what they're trying to do is find the gunships, and they did not. Does Orphelius know? No, they don't. They have no line of sight coverage on that. They don't really know. They, if they found these rapiers, those rapiers, those 13 rapiers would be dead. Okay, I was right. It does become relevant. This, Orphelius basically has one shot to get rid of all of this. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stingers. Wow. That's an absurd amount of stingers. 
And I think with the felons that that provides a wider shield. So the banishers are no longer as effective as they used to be. Which is going to be a bit problematic. And this is where the energy comes in. Orphelius losing all their energy. Sprung still with 215 energy. Did they have a singularity reactor? No, they have a lot of metal wind gener- oh, Wow. 75 here alone. Yeah, they've got a lot of wind generators. Although, harassment coming in from Orphelius, which will be still fairly effective. I mean, the Trident's alone just getting rid of the Brawler's no problem, and of course, all the ground being torn apart by Rapiers. So, energy just going down in general. But Orphelius, they're losing their energy far faster. Now they're going to be accessing metal, and that means a lot of rebuilding needs to be done. And Orphelius retreating, I guess since they can't get... Oh, I see, between the Racketeers and... There's no Vandals, though. But Banishers coming in for additional assault, which means Orphelius should... Well, at this point, like, Sprung has the advantage of these Rapiers hanging out here, smashing up their base from behind. So Sprung has no base... Sorry, Orphelius has no base to fall back to. But, on the other hand, Sprung is losing the front of their base. So it's a question, essentially a question of, can Sprung erode the back of Orphelius' base before Orphelius' assault is complete? And I think the answer is yes. These banishers are getting slowed way too much. Unfortunately, the one thing they don't really have going for them is range. Between the Racketeer and the Outlaw, they're just having a... And this Razor here just eating shots. Like, the Banishers aren't actually hitting anything they should be hitting. They need to be hitting these units here. But that Razor was distracting all of them and finally getting rid of some units under that shield. Not Convicts, Thugs, actually. So that was useful, but still the Disarm, way too much of a problem. And now Orphelius with basically no energy left. So this is probably going to be Sprung's game. Yeah, Sprung has enough to reinforce, and Orphelius just doesn't. They'll have to spend about a minute rebuilding energy. And they just don't have what they need to do. That There's nothing to reclaim for energy here. There's no trees or anything. There's no real backup reclaim. These glaives are just waiting to die. So yeah, that's kind of it. A bit of an anticlimactic finish, but an interesting map. I think Orphelius, when they said it's expensive, means that in terms of processing time, but... Yeah, that was... That was kind of cool. Nice use of Banishers. I like to see that, although... Clearly, they weren't the only thing that needed to be there. Like, banishers are a really good choice. <sighs> Against Shields, it's kind of tricky. Like, the Felon was the only reason it really fell apart. Before that, they were actually doing just fine. But, yeah, that Felon was a problem. Oh, Expansive is what I mean, because it's 14 by 14 or so. I think it's 14 by 14. I could be wrong. How big is this map? I was wrong, it's 16 by 16. Which is actually fairly big. Okay, that'd be why. Yeah, it is a bit of a tricky map to actually play on, I'm sure. Bandit Plains is the same size, and I find that also kind of tricky to play on. Makes for some cool games, though. Anyway, that's that game. So next game is going to be on Obsidian, a bit of a smaller map. A bit smaller. I think this is 14 by 14. Yes, it is. That will be between Rar and Shaman. So that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.